Member for Kamloops North Thompson. Well, well thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, well, merit's a long way from Crofton. And the questions are about merit. And what merit needs, the support they need from this government, they need timber sales and they actually need permits so they can access fiber. They don't want to change careers. They're generational, multi-generational loggers and multi-generational mill workers that want to stay employed in the forest sector. That's what this government seems to be disconnected with. Forestry workers and contractors, they've been rallying in downtown Merritt and outside many ministry offices, demanding immediate action. Shelley Stewart is a First Nations logging contractor and is just one of many that wants to get back to work. Under this NDP government, however, she has no work and she's had to lay off her crew of 30 people. She says, and I quote, the permit delays are just one example of how the NDP government is ignoring the little guy. Their inaction is holding us back and hurting small businesses like mine, and that includes First Nations forestry operations. It's time for them to prioritize our livelihoods. It's time for the Premier to start taking some accountability for this. They are failing miserably in getting permits approved. When will the logjam of permitting break? Here, here. Minister of Jobs. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite for the question. Everyone agrees that we need to move past the boom and bust cycles that are too often leaving forestry workers and communities behind. And that's why we're making important investments. I'll share one with the member opposite, BC Timber Sales, where we just launched a new program that will provide dedicated access to timber and accelerate the growth of value-added manufacturing. And what are people saying about that, Mr. Speaker? Members, order. Let's hear not my thoughts, but Joe Namath of Pulp and Paper Coalition, who said on January 19th, in regards to timber supply, this is a major positive step towards resolving the single biggest issue BC forest sector is facing, lack of economic fibre. It's supported by the work of government and industry, and they've completed since the fall of last year through the Pulp Fiber Supply Force, Mr. Speaker. We understand these issues, and we're addressing them. Hamloops North Thompson. Thank you. Well, well, perhaps the government didn't hear my colleague's first question, where he pointed out it's been 450 plus days since BC Timber Sales has sold anything. So there isn't any sales happening with BC timber sales. The reality is this government's inaction is having devastating impact on all logging contractors out there, including First Nations contractors like Shelley Stewart. This is the time of year that they need to be logging to pay the bills. When Shelley and her crew are working, that means $200,000 a month in the Merritt area are going to fuel suppliers, suppliers like Lordco and other parts stores to keep their operations running. But not only is that crew of 30 not working, it impacts all of those suppliers in their workforce as well. And what do we get from this government? Excuses and dragging of feet. Shelley says, and I quote, it's a slap in the face that the NDP government is putting the brakes on forestry in this province. Their actions are coming at the expense of logging contractors like mine. This government needs to do their job so we can do ours, end quote. And I'll point out that in this year's budget, the revenue projections are the same as last year, a billion dollar decline. This government sat for the last 12 months doing nothing to help forestry, expecting a drop in revenues like that. So in Merritt on March 17th, there's Question going to be member. a big rally protesting this, trying to get action from the government. I know the government members routinely question, like member? to go to protest rallies. So, will anyone, will any minister in this government commit to being in merit on March 17th to meet these people face to face and look them in the eye and tell them they're actually doing all they can do to actually get their mills reopened again? Minister for Jobs, Economic Development and Innovation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We know that there are significant economic headwinds that the forestry sector is faced with today. The beetle kill, forest fires, softening of timber sales in the U.S., just to name a few, Mr. Speaker. But let me be very clear. This side of the House has nothing to learn 
about the forestry sector from that side of the House. The old government completely abandoned workers. They saw nearly 30,000 forestry jobs disappear under their watch, Mr. Speaker. Here, chirping on the other side, the member may not want to believe this, but don't take my word for it. These numbers come directly from Statistics Canada. In 2021, when they came to power, the forestry sector, pardon me, 2001, when, the for, when they came to power, the forestry sector provided good family supporting jobs to 85,000 workers in British Columbia. By the time they were done, there were 56,000 jobs left in the forestry sector, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts. 